Last time Josh and Kirsty showed you how to build, light and shoot on a green screen. And today we're going to be talking about what you do once you get that footage back into the computer for compositing. Now the techniques we're talking about apply to any kind of green screen shoot, but I'm going to be specifically talking about this shot. Josh made this for the HitFilm 4 Pro launch and it's got a lot of cool stuff going on. Today I'm going to focus in on one specific aspect, which is how we got the guy inside the helicopter. First up, you need to remove the green screen background, or in this case the blue screen, which we used because Joffrey was wearing a green costume. This can be done in HitFilm Express as well as HitFilm Pro. Now the golden rule of any kind of green screen work is that you want to maximise the separation between your foreground and your background. That just makes everything easier. And for the sake of your own sanity, if you've got someone in a green costume, just don't shoot them in front of a green screen. Swap it out for a blue screen. HitFilm makes removing the green screen fast and easy. And once that's done, you can move on to the second stage, which is compositing the layer into your shot. This is a particularly cool example because it shows off HitFilm 4 Pro's unified 3D space, which makes it super easy to put layers in and around 3D models. There's no awkward masking or having to fiddle around with multiple layers and mats. You literally just put the guy in the helicopter. Okay, so let's get into it. We've uploaded a blue screen clip that you can download to try out the techniques for yourself, so check out the link on the info cards or down in the video description if you want to grab hold of that. We can't actually give away the helicopter that we use in this shot because that was purchased from turbosquid.com, but there's loads of great places that give away 3D models for free, which work really well in hit films, so check out places like tf3dm.com and foundation3d.com. There's a load of talented people that put their work up there and you can just download it and try it out. After importing the clip, right click it and create a new composite shot. This will set it up with the clip's properties all ready to go. So one of the cool new tweaks in HitFilm 4 Pro is that we've made the search box in the effects library a bit cleverer. So if I search for blue screen, it'll find anything related to that topic, even if the effect doesn't actually have that word in the name. So first up we're going to look at the colour difference key. So drag that one onto your clip. In the controls panel, make sure you switch the screen colour from green to blue, otherwise it's going to get confused with this particular shot because obviously we're using a blue screen. Now this is our simple key, which you can find in both Express and Pro, but just because it's simple doesn't mean it isn't awesome. The general workflow with this key is to first adjust the gamma to do your main removal. So I'm going to drop that down until the blue screen mostly goes away. Switching on the view map property makes it much easier to see exactly what's going on. And I can now tweak the min and max sliders to clean up some of the fuzz in the background and the foreground until we have this really nice clean matte. You can see that was just a few seconds to get that kind of quality key. Pro users also have the more advanced chroma key effect. So let's take a quick look at that as well. I'm going to remove the color difference key first and then drag on the chroma key. Opening this up reveals a much more advanced key with a ton of options. This is especially powerful for complex or challenging composites. I'm going to use the colour picker here to select the blue behind Joffrey. Incidentally, Joffrey is one of our genius web developers. He came all the way from France to work with us. And he also happens to look pretty intense when you put him in military fatigues, which is, you know, kind of handy for the stuff we film. Picking out that blue colour has got us a pretty great key right away without even touching any of the other controls. In the effects view menu, you can switch to the matte view and then adjust the gain to get the key tuned in. Down in the matte controls, you can then change the clip background and foreground to clean it up. It's a very similar process to using the color difference key. And in this example, that's kind of all you need to do. We don't need to use all the other settings this time around, but it's good to know that they're there for when you've been given a really tricky shot to work with. So if you find that the color difference key isn't quite doing what you need, make sure you load in the chroma key and really go to town on it. So what about all this stuff that's around the edge of the blue screen? Well, that's where masking comes in. You'll note that this was all shot very carefully so that the parts of Joffrey that weren't in front of the blue screen barely move, his feet and his left hand. All the parts of his body which were moving extensively are in front of the blue screen, and that's gonna save us a ton of time. Up in the viewer, select the pen tool and then click to start adding points to our mask. We're going to draw loosely around Joffrey. This can be a pretty rough and dirty mask because we know he's going to be composited inside a helicopter where you're not going to be able to pick up on the fine details. Once the mask is completed, it combines with the chroma key, resulting in a really, really clean key. 
You'll also note that adding the chroma key and the mask hasn't really affected performance at all. This will vary depending on your system of course, but it's always useful when common techniques like this work in real time. Ok, let's move on to step 2. We've got our perfectly keyed actor, so what do we do with him now? Well, we can put him anywhere, such as in a helicopter. I'm going to keep this relatively simple, so I'm not going to be getting into how to set up 3D models and lights and cameras. What I've got here is a composite shot containing an animated helicopter sliding into frame. It's all ready to go, and we're going to put our freshly keyed Joffrey inside the back of the chopper. From the media panel, I'm going to find the composite shot containing the keyed clip and drag it onto the timeline. So there it is, now functioning as a simple 2D layer overlaid onto the chopper. I'll now switch the layer from 2D to 3D using the dimension selector on the timeline. Okay, but this is actually to be expected. You see, what's happened here is that the keyed layer has entered the 3D space as some kind of gigantic Frenchman. And if I switch out to the perspective view, you can see what's really going on with Mega Joffrey towering over the helicopter. HitFilm, of course, doesn't know what kind of relative scale these layers should be to each other. So let's position and scale them up more appropriately. First up, still in the perspective view, I'm just going to slide the layer backwards until it intersects with the 3D model. If I move in for a closer look, you can see how the keyed video layer is moving through the 3D geometry. Okay, I'm going to shrink him down to about 4.5%. That seems to be about right compared to the scale of the helicopter. And I can now just move him around and position him into place inside the chopper. Now because the 3D video layer exists in the same unified 3D space as the helicopter, doing this positioning is pretty easy and obvious. I can orbit around the helicopter if I need to, to get a better view of where it's going. An important step is to make sure that we parent the layers together, otherwise Joffrey has a horrendous accident as soon as we move the playhead. So on the timeline I'm going to open up the keyed layers parent menu and select the chopper. This will lock the position of the keyed layer to the movement of the helicopter. Just like that. Well, let's switch back to our camera view, and I'm going to turn my 3D lights back on. You can see we've ended up with Joffrey looking rather overlit. This is because he's being lit by the 3D lights in the scene, because the keyed layer is now a 3D object in that scene. To make him look more realistic, I'm going to go in and tweak his material properties. You can see that he currently has quite a high specular value, which basically means that the light is shining off the layer really brightly. And while Joffrey is a shining light of the hit from office, we don't really want that in this particular shot. So after dropping Specular down, it looks a lot better, and I can then adjust the diffuse setting to get the exact brightness that matches the surroundings. One super cool benefit of how HitFilm text slots together is that the keyed layer can also receive shadows from the 3D helicopter. So if I turn on shadow rendering, you can see that as the rotor blades spin around, they cast a shadow onto the keyed layer. That's zero extra effort on my part as a compositor, but it really helps sell the realism of the shot. You can of course use additional effects to grade and blend layers together even further. The final shot mixes together a whole ton of other techniques. Ok, take a look at this. This is the shot I'm going to be talking about in my next tutorial. But in the meantime, the next video is going to be Josh and Kirsty talking about some practical tips on how to shoot with lightsabers. So that's continuing our month of celebrating Star Wars. Okay, subscribe if you don't want to miss it.